everyone, a couple updates that I have for y'all. I'm going to list them off first, and you can kind of skim through the video um, to skip ahead if there are some things that you might not necessarily care about. These are the five things that I'm going to address today. Uh, one, school closure and shelter in place update. Two, SFUSD continuity of learning and distance learning. Three, grading. Four, editing Google Docs or assignments that you have submitted. Five, um, a journal assignment that could that, that isn't required uh, might be extra credit. We'll see. For the shelter in place update, it appears that on March 19th, um, Dr. Vincent Matthews, the superintendent of the San Francisco Unified School District, um, put out that SFUSD continue, continues to monitor new information from state and local officials. We have not extended school closures beyond three weeks and are preparing for a variety of possibilities. Um, it doesn't look like uh, the extension or there will be any extension of a school closure after um, spring break, which ends on April 3rd. So that is assuming that we will return on April 6th. Now, that's not 100% confirmed um, because the shelter in place that Governor Gavin Newsom um, set in motion on March 17th goes all the way through April 7th. Some of you have commented back and asked, does this affect when we'll be returning to school? Um, because April 6th is the following Monday after our spring break ends, which we, we would return on. But in accordance to the shelter in place, technically we wouldn't really be able to share the same space until after April 7th. I'll put some links below with updates from SFUSD directly if you just want to um, go directly to their website and see what new information they have to say. So SFUSD is still providing free meals uh, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, and you can get breakfast, uh, lunch, dinner, um, and any other food. Again, no student ID or confirmation that your student is required, but a student or child has to be present in order to receive food. What remains open during this time? You can still go to grocery stores, farmers markets, food banks. You can still order food as long as the uh, restaurant is doing delivery. So not all restaurants are open. Uh, gas stations, pharmacies, laundromats, banks, essential local and government offices and law enforcement, fire stations, garbage and sanitation and utilities like electricity, water, gas, internet, hospitals and clinics, and healthcare operations. What is closed during this time is dining restaurants, again, unless they've transitioned to delivery services, um, entertainment venues or convention centers, including movie theaters, places that um, hold concerts like the Chase Center or gym and fitness centers, public events, and other gatherings have been canceled across uh, the city. So they're suggesting that teachers take online webinars on how to use any online tools or resources to help set up distance learning. Um, this could be using Zoom, Google Classroom, Flipgrid, or Newzella, any other tools that are going to help teachers um, set up online learning or distance learning for their classrooms. By taking these online webinars, uh, many teachers are trying to share ideas, figure out how to approach distance learning. There's a really long email thread going across the Lincoln teachers trying to figure out what they want to do or what they should do. Um, a lot of teachers are in panic because they're not really sure how to integrate distance learning into their classrooms because not many of them have created a Google Classroom or have a lot of online functions um, prior to the shutdown. So some are trying to stick to the daily bell schedule. So, you know, you would have the 10 first period at eight o'clock um, to catch their lecture. Some teachers are trying to get their kids to sign up for Google Classroom still. Some are moving to Zoom. If you don't know what Zoom is, um, it is a conference calling um, application that you could use to talk to multiple people. And it does have other functions on it where like you can comment, you can click a button that you raise your hand um, in the middle of a discussion so you can chime in. And some are actually moving to a combination of YouTube and other things like what I'm doing with you all. Don't worry about your grade. I am seeing all of your emails. I'm getting all of your not notifications through Google Classroom. I will try to update your grades by every Friday. All of y'all need to calm down. Um, I'll get to grading as soon as I can. Um, there's a lot of you that submitted assignments because I put in a zero on Synergy. Don't worry, like the, the grades aren't going anywhere. And please only email me um, regarding grades if there's something that you've already turned in or completed and I gave you a zero for. And so thank you for that reminder. Some of you have been doing that. Um, where you've let me know that, hey, I completed this assignment, please change my grade. Otherwise, you don't need to submit your assignment and then tell me you submitted it and then tell me to change your grade. Like, that's that's not necessary. So after I grade every assignment, or even if it's uh, resubmitted, I return the assignment to you and the document to you. I'm not really sure why Google has this issue of not allowing you to edit the document after I've returned it to you. Even when I go into the share settings and I check your share access, it says that you as a student is still the owner who is able to edit. The only suggestion I have is to double check, make sure you're using your school email 
and if you have access to a computer that you're using it through a computer um, i know a lot of students prior to school closure that using your phone did not allow you to edit on the google doc especially after it being graded this assignment is not required especially according to sfusd's continuity of learning tenants rather i will give you extra credit after we return to school or find a way to incorporate it into your semester grade uh, depending on what the outcome of the shelter in place is um, so this is uh, an idea that i got from another teacher um, but here are the expectations that i have for this journal assignment school has been closed since march 13th 2020 and governor gavin newsom ordered a shelter in place on march 17th uh, despite other pandemics in, in recent decades, so swine flu, which is H1N1, uh, SARS, Ebola, etc., there hasn't been a global pandemic or a statewide shutdown during those times. As we've learned in class, there is always a master narrative that paints the picture for every story. In this case, whatever the information we're getting from the news and government, maybe any information you're getting from me, you're being tasked with documenting your story, the counter narrative to what we're seeing from the news and government. Whenever you create a journal entry, you're expected to do the following. Document and date the time when you created this journal entry. Um, you can do either of the following. Write a reflection about your day, uh, draw a picture that represents something that happened, um, or you can document this through video or photos. Um, you can take this form of documenting or journaling however you feel inspired, but it's your responsibility to compile and curate uh, it in a way that expresses your experience during this quarantine. Below in the rest of the document, um, there's gonna be some questions or prompts to consider uh, as journal entries. And so continue to look back at this document, check if there's a new update on prompts that you can do. Um, I'll try to update and add more as we are in quarantine. On my website, which I'll link in the description below, um, I've included the updates and other quick links that may have not been in any of the videos over here. So if you need quick access to seeing food distribution or any you know rules about the quarantine, check out the quick links down here. Last thing that I forgot to mention is there is an Abraham Lincoln technology eligibility form uh, that you can uh, fill out here. Uh, this is something that Ms. Belisi had sent out to uh, the staff on Friday. Uh, so if you're someone who doesn't have stable Wi-Fi or access to a computer at home and you just have your smartphone, look into this form. Um, see if you can sign up and get a Chromebook from school. According to SFUSD's website, the tech distribution happened from the 18th to the 20th, but I emailed Ms. Belisi. Uh, she said to have students fill out this form. Yeah, they said they sent out a message um, and they received 30 responses. So if you need a Chromebook, I'll put the link in the description below. Fill out the Google form to let the administration know that you need access to technology.